weekend. Um, I am having a pretty good weekend. And we're ready to paint some, uh, some fun stuff. So tonight I'm doing a resin swim bait. This is by Shank's Bake, Shank Bait Co. Sorry. So um, Shank Bait Company. And um, hopefully the owner of Shank Bait Company will be uh, joining us here shortly. Austin, uh, say hello. If you have any questions about, the, about his glides, feel free to ask questions of him. And I'm sure he will be more than happy to answer whatever questions you have. Uh, I'm not the expert on the bait. I am just the expert on the paint. So um, he sent me one to paint for you all. And here we are. So um, I am going to go ahead and post a discount code on my Facebook feed. Once I get up here, we're going to do 20% off any regular priced items tonight. That's more than I usually do. So take advantage of it while you can, because it won't be offered again for quite some time. So the code will be live 20. You can get 20% off regular price items. That'll only be good through Sunday night at midnight. All right. Don't, don't forget to set your clocks ahead tonight. Daylight savings time. That either makes you really happy or really mad. Depending on you are. I like the uh, light out later in the day myself, but I know you don't necessarily all agree with my with my point of view. So I hope you guys are all doing well. I cannot get the feed to come back to come up on my side, so I'll join you just as soon as I see it come up over here. Sometimes my iPad hates me. So if you have any issues with um. The connection, I know that in the past there have been some issues with the Facebook Lives. Um, you can always pop over to YouTube. I posted the YouTube link on my page, on my um, business page this afternoon. I was not able to, um, I was not able to enter an event on Facebook today for this because I put in the, the name of the, um, the resin uh, swim bait makers, company, which is Shank Bait Co. And I got flagged for violating community standards for um, discussing something that could cause physical harm or something like that. So basically the word Shank is not appropriate, apparently. I don't know how he gets away with it, but um, I did not get away with it. So I was not able to post the event, but I was able to go live. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> Good Lord, Facebook. Yes. Gotta love it or not. So I couldn't um, post the event. So if you can share this during the live show, that would be wonderful. On Facebook, you just click the share button and share it to your page or whatever uh, pages you want to share it on. So thanks, everybody, for joining. I would appreciate the shares. Like my page while you're here if you haven't done that before. Um, and hopefully Austin will join us. There he is. So Austin Arrow, he's here. This is his bait. He made it. He sent it to me. Uh, so share the feed. We'd love to see more people on. Lots of people will watch the replay, no doubt. So um, this will get a lot more views in the days to come. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to prime this with, this is all cleaned up and ready to go. So, uh-oh. Can you guys still see me? For some reason, um, it said live video has ended on my end. If that's the case, I'm going to have to pop back on. Facebook, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just kind of crazy what gets flagged. Things that are not. Yeah. It's like they can't take the time to understand the difference between what real violent comments are and what so they just flag words i guess i'm okay all right it just said that on my end i always get cut off for some reason on my end so i'm just doing um a decent coat of steinal res primer as always steinal res is what i use to help um, with 
adhesion on um, as a first coat. It is made by Badger and it's available. You can get it on USA Airbrush Supply. I'm sure you can get it other places too, but I I bought it mine on USA Airbrush Supply, which is where you generally go to get replacement parts for Badger brushes anyways. So um, it's one of the places anyways. Anyway, it just helps the paint stick a little bit better than um, water-based paints uh, don't adhere particularly well to plastic. This isn't exactly plastic, but um, same, you know, same kind of thing. It's a smooth surface. These are a little more, more porous than plastic, so it's probably less of an issue if you're starting with a raw bait, but um, it doesn't hurt to just throw down a primer before you do your base coat. I had to think about which cup I was rinsing my brush out in because I almost used the wrong one again. Um, there we go. I don't know if that's better or worse. I just turned my light on. Probably can see more of my wrinkles that way. All right, so I'm rinsing this out. This is just water. I'm just rinsing out the cup here, and then I'm going to switch to... Uh, just a regular white for my base coat. So that does not double as a base coat. You still need to use a base coat. Um, it doesn't really give you a very bright white. It's just a, you can even get Steinol Res Primer in black and gray and pink. You can get it in a bunch of different colors if you don't want white. Uh, you still need to use a base coat because it's not very bright. Thanks guys. All right. Hello, hello, guys. Just making sure I'm not missing any questions. All right. Hello, guys. All right, so I'm just going to put a coat of white on here until I feel like it's sufficiently covered, and then we'll do some... I'll have to heat set this really well, and then we're going to do some colors. I came up with a new shad color that I'm going to be, I just did a bunch of crankbaits in. So we're going to do that tonight, something new. I'm doing some red and yellow, some candy red and yellow and uh, honey gold craws. And I'm doing a, this shad pattern in some crankbaits right now, and those should be done soon. Okay, so you want to make sure you get the primer everywhere. I mean, the base coat everywhere. All right. So, what's everybody up to? Is it getting warmer where you are, or are you bracing for another snowstorm? We had snow this week, but we had, today was really warm. It was like 63 and sunny. Kiddos had a birthday party at the trampoline park, so we did that for a couple hours. They're kind of getting over a little cold. I was on the fence about whether I should let them go or not, but... I think it was A-OK. -okay. All right, so that's done. I wonder if I can get this cap off. So I put way too much paint here, so I'm just going to pour it back in. And you, you can do that. I need to start doing that more because I waste a lot of paint. And, um, you know, honestly, with water-based paint, they're so, they're so inexpensive that it's not as big of a deal. But I use a lot of lacquer paints, and they're not cheap. And I waste a lot of them. And I need to stop that. All right, so all I'm doing is wiping it out again. I just dropped my stir stick. One degree. Uh, no, this is not one of your baits. This is um, this is uh, 
I'm not sure what the name of the bait is. Austin can speak to that. He's the owner of the company. Um, and I'm painting one for him just so you guys can see his great work. And I can pretty it up and make it look nice. Um, no, I do not. I have not received the glide baits. You, the one you ordered, Stephen, it, it was a glide bait, not a three-piece swim bait, and uh, not resin, plastic. This is from um, Shank Bait Company. It's a resin glide, so these are handmade. All right. So first things first, we're gonna do some orange on the the low sides. And then we're going to do some black, like a light black on the top high sides. And then across the middle, we're going to go with gold. So I made this color up all by myself. Snowed here Friday, but by Monday in the 60s. So you guys probably are going to get the weather we have now a few days later. A six inch 2.5 slow sink. All right. Oh, yeah, in Florida. Yeah, my brother's in Florida right now at my parents' house. Him and his wife went and visited my parents. They live um, just south of Tampa. And they have good weather this week. Yeah, not that warm here, but it's not bad. Oh, I went too high on that, but it's okay. I'll cover it up. So I'm just doing, I'm not going to go super bright with the orange. Okay, just like something like that. Just a light. Make sure it's even all the way across, so nothing too bright. Just like a, like sherbet, right? All right. If you ever wonder why I'm holding up my bait in two different places, I have two different cameras. Everybody says, I wondered why you were doing that. It's because I have a webcam up high um, that I'm using for YouTube. And I have one down below, which is my phone that I'm using for Facebook. So now you know. All right. So that looks good, I think. Just a light orange on both sides on the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to clean that out. And we're going to switch to a black. And I'm going to put black across the high sides. And then I'll probably do a little black texture, just like some random spots and whatnot to give it a little bit of um, texture and irregularity, which will make it look just a little bit more natural uh, on the bottom as well before I get rid of my black. So I'll just put a little, you don't need much, just a little bit. And then this is already thin, my black, but I'm going to thin it a little more because I want this to be pretty transparent and I want to have control over how dark it is. So I added a little more reducer. You don't want to go too, too crazy with the reducer because you can kind of like mess up the, you, can, you don't want to thin it too much. Like if you need it to be more transparent, then you should add some transparent base, the 4004 transparent base to it. And that'll make it more transparent at some point um, versus you don't want to have like, you don't want like 80% reducer and 20% paint. All right. You like the YouTube feed better? It's probably clearer. Um, I just saw your pictures, Brad. I was in the middle of trying to get ready for my show, so I wasn't really able to respond, but I did see them. Um, all right. All right. Share everybody. If you haven't liked my page, I've got a lot of new likes lately, and I feel like people aren't bothering to like my page. So make sure you like my page. Like me, please. I'm nice. Most of the time, I'm nice. This black stinks. I don't know if you guys have ever used um, Wicked Detail Black, but it, it smells not very good. So with these resin baits, you want to make sure that you get some of the color in the joints too, um, just so that the joints aren't blank. I know one of the biggest complaints I've gotten about like bullshit swim baits is that they don't ever paint inside the joints. It's just like a sloppy mess. 
I'm not talking about the ones that get sent off to like Dan or Jen or something. I'm talking about the ones that I don't even know who paints the regular ones that go straight to the store, like, you know, like a um, tackle stores. I know he sells a lot of them at shows that are custom painted by like people like myself, but um, I don't paint them for, I don't paint for him, but um, the regular paint jobs are not, that you order from Tackle Warehouse or whatever, not particularly. They have, they don't get the joint, the joint painted very well. A lot of people will say that looks bad. So I always try and get in the joint the best I can. Um, it's not going to look as pretty as the rest of it. But it should have some detail. It shouldn't be the swim bait like turns and then it just looks blank. So I'm just trying not to get it too super dark. I'm kind of just doing light layers over the top. Okay, so that looks pretty good. A little darker at the top, a little lighter at the bottom. So there and there. And then I'm going to um, do a little black texture. So I'm going to take a clean paper towel. I'm just going to lay this down. And I'm going to put some, uh, I'm going to stencil a little bit of, of texture on this. I'm going to, I'm going to put my camera down just a little bit. So you can see the whole thing. Okay. Um, I have a bunch of texture stencils. You see me use them all the time. I really super desperately need to get another, a new one, a new set of these because they're so wore out in their paper. They do it on purpose. So you have to order them multiple times. If they're mylar, I wish you could get them in mylar, uh, which is this material because you can clean it, but they want you to have to buy it more than once. So they make a lot of paper. It's a bunch of crap. All right, so I'm just going to kind of hold the stencil a little bit away from the bait and just put some black, um, some fuzzy black texture spots in random places. It doesn't have to really, they don't, it doesn't have to be the same on both sides either. You can just kind of, whatever floats your boat. Try and make it look somewhat random, you know. All right, so that's what it looks like now. Just a little bit. I'll do the other side. And um, that's mostly going to get covered up, but you'll see a little bit of it show through when I put the scales on. And that's the whole point. Because fish have scales, and then under the scales, there's texture. There's some on top. There's some underneath. And so um, you're just kind of trying to make it look not so perfect, you know? It's more natural looking. You can do a super clean look, and that looks nice too. But if you want something to look more natural, then you have to make it look a little messier. Then. It's messy, right? Do I sound like Bob Ross? Does he always say that nature is perfect or something like that? I don't know. I haven't watched Bob Ross in a really long time, but it sounds like something he would say. All right. I just spilled that. So I got to clean black out really well. I'm trying not to use my other airbrush because I'm not 100% confident that it's going to not stick. It's kind of giving me problems. So this one I know is pretty clean. I cracked one of my nozzles on one of my um, my badger guns, and I ran out of um, the super fine detail nozzles. So I need to order some, and I have not done that yet. I could just convert it to a 0.5 like the rest of them because I have plenty of those, but for some reason I have like none of the 0.3s. If you're going to order from there, just order more than one of everything because it takes forever for them to ship things. Okay, now what we're going to do is some gold across the middle. 
<laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. No, no, no. <laughs> That's funny. I made a secret pattern. It's a secret I can't tell you. I'm actually listening to this podcast right now called Family Secret. You should you should listen. I listen to a lot of podcasts because I'm, you know, it helps me focus. I've got I'm a little a little uh, attention, I have a little bit of an attention issue. Have I had any pro anglers reach out to me for custom paint jobs? Yes, I have. Uh, I'm not allowed to discuss pro anglers though because they they get kind of cranky about that. <laughs> Hi guys. No sharing what they're using. It's a, a code. All right. So right across the middle here with this, we're going to do some gold all the way from the tail to the face. This is just Createx regular gold. So it's not going to cover everything. It's just going to give it like a gold shimmer in the middle. And while that dries, I'm going to do some on this side. And I'll keep going until I get to the darkness that I want it to be. It's kind of transparent, so. Happy mistakes, yes. Thanks, guys. What do you do with the removable silicone type? Uh, tails, I take them off and I don't paint them unless I'm asked to do so. I can paint them. Um, if you're going to paint silicone tails, you have to use a special paint called SB Coat. It's made for soft plastics. It's very toxic. That's the um, pretty much the only thing that will work. Uh, do not clear coat silicone tails. It is not going to stay. It is not a good idea. It will not work. The first time you put it in the water, it will come off. So you have to use uh, SP coat paints or you have to leave them as is. People will say they've clear coated um, silicone tails with KBS. I haven't tried it. I don't think it's a good idea. I'm not going to do it. Um, but I also have SB coat paints, so I can say that because I don't, I don't need to do that. I don't need to use acrylic paint, but acrylic paint will not stick to silicone. So uh, my advice would be to leave them how they are. This has a brush tail on it, um, but normal, like I have uh, GFBs here and I'll just tape them. And then I just leave them whatever color they are. If somebody asks me to paint it, if I have the color they want in um, SB coat, which I have most colors that would be painted on a tail, um, then I can paint them if, if I get asked to do so. SB coat paint is, me is made to adhere to soft plastic. It kind of etches itself into the material. And so you don't need a clear coat. It just... Um, it sticks on its own. Oh shoot, you know what I forgot to do? I was supposed to do some texture on the face and I forgot. I'm not paying attention, you guys. I just put a tiny bit of black in there and I'm gonna take, um... okay, so this is like a medium. I'm trying to decide if I wanna use the, the big or the, the medium. These are called splotchy. Um, they're stencils from Anarchy Models. They come in uh, different sizes. This is a uh, small, small, medium, large splotchy. And they are great. Um, they probably need to be cleaned right now. I'm gonna use the medium for this. It's not as medium as it should be because it's really dirty. And I'm just gonna do the cheek with some black texture. It's kind of wet because that came out really fast for some reason. So I'm gonna hit it with the dryer. Hi everybody. 
Of course, Arthur, no problem. Okay, my bean mug <laughs> makes me look wrinkly. All right, that's just what I forgot to do, a little face texture. So if you didn't hear me say it earlier, this is a color that I'm doing on some crankbaits right now. They're actually almost done. They're sitting in front of me. So it, these will be available with in square bill, a little John, plopper, um, some warts, a few deep divers and some S cranks I'll have um, in the store this week in this color. If you want anything else, you can message me and I can paint it for you. Okay, let's do a wrap. This is just loofah material. Okay, it came straight from the Walmart, Walmart bath section. Um, it is plastic and it is a total pain in the you-know-what to work with, but it's the best looking stuff for fish scales. So you just deal with it. So all I'm gonna do is wrap this around like a taco, okay? And then I'm gonna make sure it's straight. And then when I get it straight, I'm gonna roll up the excess here and I'm gonna put a clamp on here. You can use like some binder clips or you can use some alligator clips. Something that has a flat, see that doesn't even work. These work the best got a flat end on it and they clamp nice and tight so I'll have like four million on, of these on here by the time I get done with this um, and that's the easiest way you you might be able to find something better and if you do please let me know because I will probably buy them um, if you can find something a little wider that has like a big open like that opens wide you know so you can get around the mesh and then clamp it down um, something that's a little wider does that make sense that would probably be easier, but this is what I have right now that works, and so that's just what I'm using until I find something that might be better. But you have to be able to get it really tight, so um, whatever it is, it has to um, clamp down tight enough that it doesn't move once you get it down, and you just have to keep going around. Now, when this starts rounding off a little bit, at the top, you have to clamp the top a little bit to keep it straight so it's not like... Um, so it doesn't fold around your bait and the scales don't get like um, diagonal. Does that make sense? You don't want the scales to start like turning on the bait like diagonal. So you have to clamp the top and the bottom. The face I'm mostly going to cover um, on the, he the head part anyways so that it doesn't have much of a scale to it. But um, especially on swim baits because... Real fish don't really have scales right on the gill plate. It's more of a texture, less of a scale. And so, um, but I don't know. We're, we're just going to clamp it anyways straight just in case I decide that's not what I'm going to do. Um, okay, and then we'll just keep going down the bait until we get to the, the end. This is um, uh, time-consuming, so uh, and it's frustrating. And I don't, it, it never really gets that much easier. You just have to do it, suck it up. You know what I'm saying? I imagine if you get enough paint on these babies, it would get easier. But what I find is that the paint flakes off of this material anyways. And so it never really stays on there much. So you can reuse it as many times as you want, but, um, Because sometimes when you, I use loofahs, you know, you'll get a lot of paint stuck on the material. See, I have to ease off now and go back because it's not straight on this side. Sometimes if you get um, a lot of paint stuck to your loofah material, it's a little more defined and it'll make the, but uh, this material, because you're moving it so much, it doesn't really, the paint doesn't really stick to it much. Once it's dry, it doesn't. Okay, so this is where I'm starting to get that crooked pattern. I have to pin the top. The scales will start to distort a little bit. So you have to um, clip the top to keep them from looking crooked. 
So I just put some binder clips on the top to straighten it out. And then, then work on the bottom again. This is why it costs so much to have um, swim baits custom painted. It takes quite a bit of time. And this is a pattern I already know, so it's faster than something that you, like if you send something to me that I've never done, it would take a lot longer. Because I probably would practice it on something else first before I did it on your pretty $100 swim bait. Or some of them are more than that. Ah, this is so frustrating. It's just not coming out straight. I'll get it. Don't worry. It just doesn't look right on the top. Hang in there. Don't leave me because you are bored. I promise it gets better. Um, I need some more of these. Oh, hang tight there. I've got some more down here. Some of these are easier to wrap than others. The more um, the more varied in shape they are, the harder they are. Okay. God, that just isn't straight. I'm really super particular too, so it doesn't help. Okay. See those binder clips? They just don't stay. They're not tight enough. Okay. That looks pretty good. So that's pretty straight. You can see that. It's pretty straight. And then the other side, pretty straight. Okay? So we're good. A Golden Girls episode. I'm probably almost old enough to be a Golden Girl. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Share the feed if you can, guys. Share it on your page. Share it wherever you think people might want to see what we're doing here. All right. So next, I am going to put some um, pearl white over all of this. This is not working right here. This is not going to stay where it is. Okay, I'm just not going to touch that anymore. Okay, so I'm going to put some pearl white in here. This is Aztec pearl white. Um, I'm going to put a little reducer in here first. This stuff is just a beast at clogging airbrushes. Aztec pearl white. Um, it has a, I don't know, it just it dries fast and... Um, it can be very clogging, but it's also like a really nice pearl. So it's worth it, I guess, is what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm gonna spray I'm gonna spray straight down. Let me put this in my hand. What am I drinking? Uh, Coke Zero. I drink cherry Coke Zero. I don't drink alcohol at all, actually, so I hate to disappoint. All right, but I have a very bad Cherry Coke Zero habit. We all have our own problems, right? <laughs> okay, so this is mostly going to cover, it's going to cover most of it, right? You're just going to be able to see those colors kind of sheen through. But when I take off the mesh, you're going to be able to see those colors. Um, I'm, you're going to be able to see them where the mesh was, if that makes any sense, right? Okay. So let's flip this over. It should have been, that, that was probably dry because it doesn't take that long for the Aztec paint to dry. Okay, and I'm going to do the other side. It's already getting ornery in here. I don't know if you can hear it bubbling. Okay, that looks 
pretty good. So I'm gonna rinse this out before my brush is totally ruined. Um, okay, next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some, um, I gotta think it. I'm gonna put some blue on the high sides. It's gonna be interference blue. And um, I'm going to do a little bit of burnt umber near the nose. I totally made this color up on my own. I have, I have no reference for it. It's just a, a random. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Oh, my God. I forgot a really important step. I'm so mad. Okay. It's okay. I'll figure out another way to do it. I, there's supposed to be a lateral line on here before I put the mesh on, and I forgot. That's the worst. Ah! I'll figure it out. I'm going to think about it and figure it out. What am I going to do about that? Okay, so this is uh, Interference Blue. This is by Pearl X Interference Blue. You can order this um, anywhere they have art supplies. Um, you can also get like Pearl X. They sell some um, combo packs where you can buy like a bunch of different colors in smaller containers. They're, this is like what, half ounce. You can buy like the eighth ounce containers and they come in sampler packs with a bunch of different colors. That's nice to try out a bunch of different colors if you can swing it. Uh, but the most important colors I would say to get are Interference Blue and Interference Violet. Those are the two that you really want to get if you're going to get two. You can, uh, Golden also makes, um, Golden High Flow makes paints in these colors as well. That's already pre-mixed if you want to go that route. You can buy them that way too. So I'm going to do this on the high side, so just on the top. Now, um, it's not a bright color. Interference blue is kind of a, um, it's a sheen, right? It's a color that shows up when the light hits it a certain way. It looks more blue than it, when it does in other light. In some light, you can't hardly see it at all, or can hardly see it at all. So it's, you kind of build it to where you like how it looks or how blue it is or whatever. And you can also put this powder in your clear coat if you're dip um, if you're gonna do like um, like a UV dip or something. You can mix a, like a small can or jar of UV resin with this stuff in it and dip. But if you have a, you might not want to dip the bill. You can mix it with your spray clear coat too if you want to. I haven't really done that since I started spraying automotive, but I should do it because um, you could probably make it some really pretty stuff, adding interference powder to your clear coat. Be a good experiment. Strike King does it with a lot of their baits. You'll see like the oyster pattern is, that's what that is. And then um, Mega Bass's French Pearl. Bait. That's also interference blue on top um, in the clear coat. <clears throat> so if you if you've bought either of those baits, now you know what I'm talking about. This is uh, the same thing except for I'm putting it in paint instead of in the clear coat. If you want this to go faster, like you know you want to put a lot on, you can also just put more resin or put more pigment in your, uh, I used 4004 transparent base to mix it with. You can also mix it with uh, 4030, which is balance and clear. That works fine too. What?
You drink Pepsi, Cherry Dr. Pepper. I do normally wear a mask when I paint. I paint with lacquer paint normally. Um, so very toxic stuff. So I wear a, um, a 3M respirator with uh, vapor cartridges and particulate cartridges. Um, and I also have a paint booth and I spray in here behind me. Um, and I have a fan that vents out the back door. Um, so you have to get the 6001 um, vapor cartridges and then a particulate cartridge. And that's what I normally wear. The only time I don't is if I'm spraying water-based during my show. Uh, but even before I switched to lacquer paint, I still wore a mask while I was painting, except for during my show, because nobody can hear me. I mean, you could probably hear me, but it's not, it's not very pleasant. So I paint one lure a week without a mask on, and that's it. All right, um, next is going to be umber. Um, I... I used a color call. I, I used a different color for the original, but I don't have anything like that in um, water base. So I'm going to use umber because it's close enough. Um, so it's just a reddish brown color, kind of like um, the color of dark cedar or something. And uh, that's Wicked Detail Burnt Umber. And it's thick. Um, so you do have to kind of reduce it. Some of the Wicked Detail colors are ready to spray. Um, some of them come out thicker than others. It just sort of depends on the bottle you get sometimes. Sometimes they come in the bottle a lot thicker than like the last one you had. So, um, so it's kind of a reddish brown color. So I'm just gonna um, do like from the nose up to like just behind the gill plate with this color. Just a little bit at a time because I thinned it a lot and I don't want it to run. So I'm going to heat set it in between. Yes, you can use it in soft plastics too, Jake. Jake makes a lot of soft plastics. How's Wisconsin treating you? Are you getting used to the, the, the frigid cold? <laughs> I know you're from Indiana, aren't you? So you're not terribly unused to it, but Wisconsin's like next level. I'm from Northeast Iowa, so basically Wisconsin. It's pretty in the summer, but the weather is is harsh sometimes compared to Southern Colorado, I would say. But yeah, um, the interference colors look really good in soft plastic too. You'll see them in, like you've seen Strike Kings. Um, they have a green pumpkin with the blue interference. Same stuff. It looks different when you turn it side to side in the light. Still extremely cold. Hi, Travis in Minnesota. You guys can be cold together. Uh, use tape to create the line after you remove the mesh. You know, I have a stencil, actually. The reason I wanted to add the line before is because I wanted it to have the scale pattern. And I also wanted to dull it with the pearl so it looked less dark and less harsh. Um, but normally I'll freehand lateral lines or I will use a stencil. But the tape trick works. You could do that too. Um, I wouldn't personally tape a lure that's this wet because I, even if you're using frog tape, it's going to pull tape. It's going to pull up the paint. All right. Let me think about what I'm doing here. I'm going to put the lateral line on. No, I can't do that. I'm just thinking. I'll just put it on with the mesh still on. And I'll do it really light. And we'll see how it comes out. If it, if it doesn't, um, I don't know. I'll figure something out. I learned a new trick. I read about a new trick. Actually, somebody posted something about it online about how to make a lateral line look more natural. I'm going to try it. And if it looks, if it turns out, I'll do, I'll do it during my show sometime. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. I got to see if it works first. 
Something I never thought of. Okay, so I'm gonna put just a touch of black and then I'm gonna put some uh, transparent base in here. Just to make it really light. It's still probably really dark. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's kind of a grayish color. All right, so I have a stencil that I made a long time ago, which is basically just two pieces of um, cardstock taped together. And I'm going to find the middle here, and I'm going to line it up. It's hard because these clips are in the way. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to do the best I can. So I'm not going all the way to the gill plate. I'm kind of just going, um, I'm going to leave a little bit of a space there. All right. So we're going to try and do this kind of light and see what happens. That didn't line up very well or show up very well. So I'm going to hang on a second. These clips are in the way, so I'm going to pull them off real quick. And I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to pull them off. That's better. Bear with me, everybody. my own fault for not paying close enough attention to what I was doing. Okay. Got it. I'll show you in a second because I have to flip this and I don't want to screw it up. And I'm going to do this side real quick. Should I get this relatively close to the same on this side? So I can totally freehand a lateral line, but it won't come out quite as straight or as crisp. So um, let's pull these off. So I got it. I just wanted it to be light. I didn't want it to be really crazy dark or anything. So let's pull all these off. All right. So this is how it looks right now. Okay. So it's a little orange, a little blue. Okay, and now I'm going to um, just push this out of the way, and we're going to do a little bit of gray on the eyeball, and we're going to do some brown on the back, and then I'm going to put, um, I'll just show you. So um, again, this is a color I don't I don't really have in um, in water base. So I'm going to take some silver and I'm going to mix it with just a tiny bit of black to make a dark gray pearl. Um, hang on, I'm just going to try and get a little bit of black, a little bit of black on my paintbrush. Just a little bit, and I'm going to just stir it in with this silver. This is Aztec, um, Hester's Aztec silver, and make. I just made it a little darker, so now it's like a dark gray pearl instead of. Um, you'll see it when I spray it. It's hard to show you what's in there. Okay. What 
waiting for that ice to melt. Okay, so I'm going to go around the eye socket now with this. And I'm going to have to probably dry in between because this is a water-based paint. And just build on it a little bit. I'm just getting basically around the eye socket area um, and a little bit above, like, up to the top. Enough. I'm gonna flip it over. <laughs> you gotta, gotta learn to ice fish. You're gonna be in Wisconsin. I don't really like ice fishing. I've, I've been a few times, and uh, I like being cold. Much. Not my favorite. With a fade, if you're gonna, so Anthony asked if it's if you're fading paint, is it better to go from bottom to top or top to bottom? It just depends on what you're doing, honestly. I wish I had a better answer for you. Um, it depends how much overspray you want to get on there. The main thing with a fade is you want to make sure your paint is thin. You need to have thin paint and you need to do lots of coats. Um, beginner painters have a habit of um, using way too much paint at once spraying it on way too heavy you need to be patient and do layers thin layers and build it to the, the darkness you want it to be um so it doesn't like look so harsh if that makes sense because you can screw it up really easy if you're overdoing it i'm empty all right, so I'm going to put some brown in here now, just a little bit of sepia, and we're going to do, no, actually, I can't do that first. Sorry, I changed my mind. I'm going to put this pearl back in my brush, and I'm going to make a little bit of a white shadow outline where the, the dot's going to be. Please tell me that doesn't look silver. I forgot that my brush was dipped in. It really doesn't. Okay. So right where, right in front of where the lateral line is, I'm just gonna kind of make a a white shadow. So I'm just making like a spot right there. If you can see it, and I'm gonna do that on the other side too. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna go to a sepia brown and I'm gonna do um the spine with some brown, and then um, we'll do a fin as well. And then I'll switch to black, and I'll do a little bit of a, a dot. And anything else I think of that needs to be done. Okay, so brown, this is uh, Detail Sepia. Don't ever buy this big of a bottle. Don't ever do it. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought that bottle. I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's not like a good idea at the time to buy a 16 ounce bottle of Createx paint. It's really not that great of an idea. Okay. 
So we're going to do uh, the spine here, and this is going to take a few coats because um, sepia is not a very dark, it's very transparent, so it'll take some, some coats. My needle's not seated, hang on. kind of spraying like without pulling the trigger. I don't know if you've ever had that happen before if you paint. Sometimes if your needle's not pushed in all the way tight, you're, uh, you'll start spraying paint without even pulling the trigger back. It happens sometimes when it gets dirty, the needle gets dirty. Yeah, some of these colors look way better in person than they do on video, I promise you. Anybody that's bought my lures knows what I'm talking about. It's really hard to get um, good, especially the color shifts and stuff, and like the shadow scales. It's really hard to show it in pictures and video. Coming at this from the side a little bit just to get um, a little bit of the brown to show on the top side here. from everybody watching. I know this is boring, but this is how it really, this is how it really goes in real life. enough, I think. So next I'm going to put some black in here and we're going to do a dot. Let me show you what this looks like by now, I guess. So really shiny um, it's hard to show what this it's really hard to show this on YouTube, the YouTube feed um, on my computer it looks like really I don't know weird okay so I'm gonna put some black back in here and then some just gonna thin a little bit more and then we're going to do just a little bit on the spine to make it darker. And I'm going to do a shed dot. And then I'm probably going to fill in the eye socket with black just a little bit. It'll make the eye pop a little. Okay, you got to be careful. I just have my thumbs on the seat. You got to be careful when you're spraying black. Not to put your thumbs on the bait because you'll get a, a thumbprint on the side of the bait just from the overspray. All right, that's good. Okay, now I'm going to do um, a dot. So um, this one's pretty good. This was. I think it's a mouse ears or something, but it's kind of an irregular shaped dot. 
I'm going to hold it away from the bait just a little bit. And then I'm going to spray right in the middle of this white spot I made. And you got to be careful how much you put on at once so it doesn't spider out. Um, so that's what that looks like with the spot on it. And then I'll flip it to the other side. And we'll do the other side. Don't forget, oh, you know what? I didn't post it at the bottom of the page. Hi, Dad. Hang on one second, guys. I, I didn't post the discount code at the bottom of the page. I forgot to do that on Facebook. Um, everything in store is 20% um, off through tomorrow night. That's the biggest discount. I don't usually give that big of a live discount. So anything regular price is 20% off. And then, of course, all my clearance items are still 40% off um, until they're gone. So there is... There's the code. There's the code. It's pinned now. So there's the code for your discount if you want to order some things. That's the best discount that I pretty much ever offer. So take advantage of it while you can. Stock up for spring. Go see what's new. Let's do a fin. I forgot to do the fin when I had brown on. That's my angry face, too. Did you see that angry face? I'm going to put brown in here and do it. <clears throat> you guys probably are, like, um, wanting to reach this th through the screen and be like, do the fin. You're forgetting the fin. And I'm just keep I'm talking and doing. Just doing my thing. Forgetting the fin. Okay, so brown is back in here again. And I'm gonna grab a fin stencil. I have uh, a few here. I wanted to grab a few because I was size I was gonna use. Um, this one's a good one. And then I basically just made a larger version of that. I traced it and then I just cut it bigger. So let's see which one. And then I have some other ones too, if, this, if neither of these look good. That's really big. So I gotta see which one fits. That's too small. I had another size and I don't know where it is. Here's here's some more. This is another one. Okay. That one looks good. So let's do this one right here. Okay. That one looks like it fits best. So I'm just going to set this right under the gill plate towards the bottom of the body. And then I'm going to, I should do a little bit of white back blending on the belly too, but I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to bore you guys to death. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of like white blending over the bottom just to uh, make the belly look a little more crisp or whatever. So I'm just painting basically along the edge of the stencil on the top side and on the bottom side just a little bit. Okay, so that'll give you like an outline like that, right? And then do it on the other side, and then I'll finish it up with a little bit of black on the top and towards the middle. And that'll give it, um, hang on, I gotta think about what I'm doing here. And then that'll give it um, a little bit, a little bit of a natural look. Not super great, but good. Better than just painting it, right? You know when you blow blades of grass through your thumb? That's the noise I'm hearing right now from this. Put your thumbs together and blow blades of grass through your, I guess. Anybody ever do that when they were kids? Or am I just too? Or is that just um, something people used to do? Now everybody just, kids just, Play video games. Uh, 
that came out really fast. Why? Okay, it's fine now. I need a little more in the middle here. A little bit more where it attaches his body. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. Okay, so I'll do the other side now. So I just made the top and then the part where it attaches to the body of the fish a little bit darker than it was. Hang on a second. My brain's not working right now. Which way does this go? That's it. Possible. Okay, there we go. I'm just checking to make sure to see if it's the same on both sides. And then if it's not, I'll just darken it up. Okay, there we go. All right, let's put some eyeballs on it. Take the tape off the tail so you can see what it looks like there. Okay, so here's the eyeballs. So I use, just use um, Loctite gel super glue. And then these are 10 millimeter, I think, or they're 12. I, I don't know. You tell me in Austin if they're 10 or 12, because I don't remember. So put like a natural looking eye in here. I, I couldn't, I didn't get these out of, these were kind of hanging out free. And so I, they weren't in like, they weren't in a specific envelope size. But they fit, so I was good with that. All right, so I'll show you guys what the tail looks like too once we're once we're done here. I gotta take my gloves off <laughs> to get the tape off because it'll just stick to my gloves. So I could paint this tail too um, with some like lacquer paint to make it a little darker because these are pretty pretty light. But this is what it looks like all done. So this is from Shank Bait Co. Austin Arrow is the maker of this and it is a beautiful swim bait. If you're interested in purchasing one, contact him if you want me to paint it. You can contact me, or I think he does some pretty nice work himself. So either way, um, but these are uh, beautiful. It looks great. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you liked it, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget the discount code. Go check out what's in stock. I'll have some new stuff for you this week, so check back often, and um, I will see you guys next weekend. <laughs> blow through the grass yeah all right if you have any questions yeah again text him or message him or whatever and we will see you guys later take care <laughs>